which would be Jose Pico and Jordi Romeo talking about human cities. Thank you, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for being here, because I know today, uh, this is like the first event on the last day of the campus party. So I guess it's pretty tough being here. I know probably, probably you have great expectations, so I hope I just can be uh, meeting those expectations. So the title of this presentation is uh, Human Cities. Um, and of course, uh, the first question is, can, be, can cities be of anything else, about or, uh, uh, something different from humans? And of course, the answer is not. Cities, essentially, uh, is where things happen. Most of the population lives in cities, and that percentage of population that lives in cities is increasing every year. And that's essentially because in cities is where things happen. It's where we meet other people, we buy, we sell, we exchange information. And uh, that's essentially where all the progress, uh, future things will happen. What do we do when we are tired? We want to rest. We go out to the country. Why? Because there is nothing there to do. It's boring. I mean, you can see the sunset, the birds, the little animals, but actually nothing happens there. So actually things happen in the cities, and uh, this is... Uh, why we uh, make this presentation. I'm personally, I'm an engineer, and uh, of course I have certain inclination towards technology, and uh, of course uh, people, when there is another look to the cities, and this is why we call these human cities. We want to look at the cities from the human point of view. Nevertheless, uh, I also teach engineering, and there is always a discussion, what is engineering? And there is a definition of engineering that I like a lot. There is something like, uh, Engineering is uh, putting the forces of nature to the, benefit of the to the benefit of the humanity. So what sort of force of nature are we dealing with when we're talking about IT? Well, essentially information. We know information is power, and now it's putting all this power linked to information to the benefit of humanity. And this is what we, the, the way we want to look at uh, when we talk about these human cities. I will be talking a little bit about technology, um, of course, when we talk about smart cities, that's usually the concept people are using. Uh, this is just a particular case of something that it's called the Internet of Things. The fact that we can have a lot of sensors, uh, points giving information, data, bringing all this together, and we try to make some sense out of it. What's new about uh, this situation? Well, we have massive information, low density, in a sense that we have, might have many sensors, many points giving information, but each one of them giving very low amount of data. Uh, real time, and also diverse, all kinds of information. Uh, we have technology, we have cities. What are we trying to do with all this? Well, of course, uh, we have people, we have the environment, and of course, there is something here, it's always around, it's money. At a certain, mo at a certain moment, there has to be some economic benefit out of it. And uh, it's something we cannot forget, because at the end, the deployment of the infrastructure, putting all these things together, will need certain investments. So at a certain moment, we should expect some, some return. Um, what is the present? I'm going to talk about a few projects that are already implemented, are going around, uh, in which uh, we can see how uh, having all this information, putting it together, sending to the people, uh, will actually improve the way uh, we are living. What sort of solutions are we seeing around? Well, things that have to do with mobility, waste management, environmental quality, all the management of green spaces, parks, these sort of things, security, and public lining. All those things are actually just infrastructures that are already provided in the cities that can uh, be improved, be more efficient, provide some savings just by using technology. But the important thing here is that going into this uh, smart city concept actually what it's providing also is some sort of infrastructure that can be used for some other purposes. Of course, 
all those things, all those vertical applications will be the drivers for the deployment of the infrastructure. But once we have this infrastructure, we can always think on building something else on top of that. What do we need to do all those things? Well, there is one first layer. We need the sensors. What sort of sensors do we need? Well, if we want to manage uh, the watering system of the parks, we need humidity sensors on the ground to just to know when we need to water the law. If we want to do uh, some uh, improve our waste management systems, we need some sensors to actually realize to actually find out when our containers, our dumpsters are full or not full, so we can pick them up. We can send the trucks to pick them up. Or if we want to improve the mo our parking system, we need to put some systems. Uh, we need to put some sensors on the streets just to know when a park, uh, when a car is there, it's parking there, it's not parking there. So this is the first level, sensors. What is unique about them? Well, uh, or why do we need some specific sensors for that? Well, um, if we look at those things, uh, they have several things in common. First, they are very unique. Each one of them just gives us some sort of one specific data, information. Soil humidity, fill up level of the container, the presence of a car or not. Very little information on a very, on a very small data rate. We just send information once a day, one every second. Very low data rate information. But we want them to last for a long time. This is not a smartphone that we need to recharge every day. We want to put those sensors and we want them to last, well, forever. That's impossible. But maybe 10 years, 5 years, 15 years. So they have to have very small, very little power consumption. They have to be robust. So very specific technology. On top of that, we need a second layer. How do we pick up all the information coming from those sensors? We think, well, why don't we use just our usual infrastructure? Well, our usual infrastructure, our smartphones, uh, well, they're essentially designed their protocols, they're not specifically uh, power consumption efficient. In a sense, we need to recharge our phone every day, something we can do with the sensors. So we cannot just use those sensors directly to communicate with our existing infrastructure. Our present protocols are not thought for, being, uh, for processing this large uh, amount of sensors with very small power consumption capabilities. So we need to put a medium uh, layer, something that would actually pick up the information coming from those sensors, has access to power, and then we go to internet. How do we do that? Well, we have some, especially in the cities, we have something very nice, which are street lights and street poles, which have electricity uh, a certain percentage of the day. So it's very simple to build this medium layer just by installing some devices that pick up information from the nodes, all the different sensors, they put it together, and then we go to internet. And then we are safe. We can take all the data and everything. But we need this medium layer. And then, once we have all the data collected, it's fine. It's in the, la it's in the world that we like to live. We come to the applications. And this is, for instance, we'll see in more detail, an application about park street parking management in the city of Nice, in France. If we have the information of how the cars are parked in the street, uh, we can direct people to park, uh, we can charge people for parking. There are many things that we can, uh, we can do. So if we go a little bit more in detail, just let me present you some specific projects. This is uh, uh, something, we're talking about the present. It's already being deployed in the city of Nice. Uh, 8,500 parkings, oops. Let me, okay. Uh, 8,500 parking spots, about 3,500 uh, users. And actually, what sort of information are we providing to people? Well, essentially, where can they park? People can uh, even uh, have this information of parking. For people, for the city who's managing the parking streets, 
they can have a whole system of dynamic fees, manage congestion, direct people to parking places. And overall, what's the public benefit for that? The public benefit for that is a, a decrease or improvement of traffic congestion in the city. Another project. Uh, in that case, parking managing in... Uh, In a, in a shopping mall. 4,500 parking spots managed in a place where there are two, 22 million visitors. And it's estimated that just by directing people to the right parking place, uh, you can save this amount of hours and over 1,000 tons of CO2 emissions, just because you are telling people where to go to park when they get to the places. They just don't have to drive or run looking for a parking place. So. There is a benefit, not just for the individual user, but also for the, uh, for the public. Waste management. Uh, this is uh, already something that is being tested in the city of Barcelona. And just to improve the waste collection, just by having information on the level of the containers, or the dumpsters. Okay? And by this, just improving the routes of the garbage trucks, there is also a significant increase in uh, the efficiency of the system, reduction of the cost, which is good, but also reduction of the emissions of CO2, just by improving how those uh, trucks go around the city collecting the garbage. Uh, that's another... Uh, did I go...? Yeah, not another uh, project in that case in the city of Figueras in Spain, uh, monitoring of parking, car flow, uh, also parking. Once again, uh, improving the, uh, trying to improve the congestion, the, diminish the congestion of the cities. All this is about technology, okay? And I didn't want to put a big emphasis on the technology behind, uh, because those things are already being put in place. Uh, we have these infrastructures, and then what we come is the future. Uh, and what is the future? Usually people, when put this, uh, the future, they put like little baby or uh, smiling children or something like this. But this is false. This is your future. Okay? You were already little babies, you were already smiling children, but your future, my future, hopefully, is this one. So, um, what we need to think now is the following. Uh, those things will happen. We'll have those new infrastructures in the city. We will have this large amount of data providing all sorts of information about the state of the city. Ourselves are part of those sensors. We have our smartphones. We can tell where we are, what we do, what we like. So in addition to those specific sensors, we are part of that network. So what comes here is, what will be the future? What can we do to uh, actually make out of it a better place for all of us. Not just improving the economy, making things more efficient, saving money. This is fine, but also what, can, what use can we make of all this infrastructure, all this huge amount of data to improve the way we live. And that's about it. Uh, and I think that the Jose will take it from here, right? So thank you very much for being here. Uh, ¿Sabremos hacerla? Era esta, ¿eh? ¿La primera? Uh, ¿Esta? Uh, este, ahora aquí. Y ahora aquí esto se presenta... ¿Es, es aquí? No, eh, se presenta aquí. Este es que no tengo Win, yo no tengo Mac. Ah. Ah. Did we do something wrong? Huh. Okay, okay now that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm Jose Pico. I'm from Spain, from Madrid. 
and I'm an architect. And well, I don't know what I have to tell you because Jordi told most of the things I, th I think about uh, our cities, our human cities. But the deal is that I think that the city is like an organism. It's like a cell with a brain and with a heart. And you need to use the brain to get a better way of life for the people, for the citizens in the city. I'm going to read you something because, well, it's my second time I, I make an English uh, conference and so I'm a bit, uh, well, uh, nervous, nervous. Okay, what I think about human city. More than 50% of humanity lives right now on the cities. In 1940, this number will be 75%. This means that the survival of our small planet depends largely on, on, on how we organize ourselves to live, work, interact, relate, or move in our cities. This is where the idea of creation and concept of smart city comes into play. Smart cities are those where, with the help of software, we can manage this great complex machine, its urban facility, and its efficiency, and in terms of time, energy, displacement, on env or environment quality, atmosphere, noise, things like that. These objectives, values will be perfectly measurable through new technologies. As Jordi Romeo told us, at this moment, there are many innovative solutions being implemented in areas such as mobility, the environment, ICTs, energy consumption, fluid management, urban planning, knowledge economies, and urban governance. All these solutions guarantee, guarantee economic development and urban sus sustainability, respecting a good quality of citizens' lives. We are talking, we are talking right now about the brains of our city, but the heart of our cities is not the infrastructure of technology; it's the people. It's the citizen at their feelings, their subjects, perception, social and emotional, their connection, interaction, and their culture. The pursuit of these people's well-being should be the ultimate goal of the implementation of technology that only makes sense when it adds human value. In this way, while the physical sensor are able to analyze the multitude of data, atmosphere, water, noise, temperature, acoustic, light, efficiency. We need social sensors to measure the happiness and the feelings in streets, neighborhoods, or cities. All this mentioned above, can we achieve thanks to promotion this social sensor? Proactive citizens with smartphones that have the cap cap capability of interacting in their comfort areas or local areas, as well as active participants improving the condition of their environment and pushing that shared mental status we call citizenship. Our future is tied to the cities, and this only will survive if they are a collaboration in two different ways. A small city, thanks to technology, and people working and collaborating all together. This is what we mean when we talk about human city, people. And as Jordi told us, cities are the places where things happen. Our relation, our feelings, our way of life are on the city. We enjoy, we pass, we, we can talk with other people, we can go to shopping, we can go to have fun, or we can go just to work. If we don't think that all that is made by people, we will forget the most important thing in a city, the people. Reflection, sir. What is human? The head of the city. What is a city? It's the place where human beings live. And we think, when we talk and we work, with the city, we think 
keep it simple and short. It's really simple and short. We have to work with two things. Like Chan Kin in the Blue Ocean said, there is a value innovation. And the value innovation means touch innovation and value creation. But if we compare that with the city, there is a human city with tech innovation and citizen citizenship. We could very well associate the value creation with human side of the innovation. Success sense accelerated by technology. Well, this is the moment to add to the chain. Global chain market for a necessity to recuperate our values that sustain our principles. A new global economic paradigm and need of a new models to face our territory development. That's innovation, the key strategic value of the progress. Every time right now here in this place, we're talking about innovation. But we need this place. We are not on the way right now. We're not talking, of course, we are using internet to communicate us, to take uh, uh, the tools, to do a lot of things. But we need to be together, sharing things. And that's why we are in London right now. A lot of people come from Spain here. A lot of people come from other countries. And we are talking together, making new things, new tools, and new applications. And that's what we need, a place to be all together. And you know, from a long time ago, uh, you, you see how the innovation has been improving. We have been a lot of years with a, a real flat line. But in the last two centuries from when some people started with a big industrial city here in the in United Kingdom, place, Man, the place called Manchester, you know it. And they started the industrial revolution there. From that, when the people went all together to a big city, the innovation change start to improve so fast. That's what we need to do. Great city for that innovation. Against barriers and value retail. Against barriers as difficult agreement amongst public entities. Challenge economic context. Inefficient historical urbanist legacy. Pure sustainable management. What is the value really to towards the city, innovation ecosystems, the places for human experience solutions, talent attraction and retention, dynamics, diversity and de de localized reference city that one with value reference tables, central cluster, cooperation, competition, and functional activity ecosystem, the habitats. And that's where we're working right now in our architectural office in Madrid with a lot of people. It's, we're, we're working in like in a small community with people from culture, pe people from technology, people from arts, people from architecture or people from uh, urbanism. We're working in, right now in two different projects, habitats and green chimney. Habitats transformation of physical real places where indeed will take the place to regeneration spot for communication, interaction, and exchange and re revitalization of product, economy, commercial, and hot of each place. And Green Chimney provide management with the ideal dashboard to make decisions over the territories with relevant and structured action-oriented information. And this is one example, the Green Chimney by the trees, uh, we think that we have to choose the best places to live on in our cities. We need the cities, I told you, because we need the density of the people that can allow us to have hospital, to have schools, to have places, commercial or retail places, to have all you need to have a city. But the thing is that in these places, when you have all that density, when you have all of that, we have to know where is the best places to be on it. That's why we choose the green chimney. It's like the wellness places to live on. We are working with different kind of sensors 
Jordi Tolas, physical sensor, urban sensor, and social sensor. Physical, they told you, what is that? Urban, we are talking about the different places we find great when we are there, like, for example, parks, like, for example, children parks, like, for example, ped pedestrian streets. And, of course, when talk we're talking about social sensor when, when we are talking about person with feelings, emotion, with a, with a smartphone, okay, that can tell you, and, or you can miss it. Green Chimney entails a well-being measurement of our citizens. Quality and knowledge combination of physical and social sensor that value our ecosystem and well-being place. And balance a scorecard on which technology and humanity achieve the maximum joint representation. Interconnecting networking nodes, the people. And that's where we are studying. And right now here, we are working for a big, with a big group, it's called Hacking for something better, and in my, I'm working with three different groups that they are implementing new tools to make to get the all of this, and they are going to tell you what they are working uh, they are working on right now, and I will introduce you the three different groups, and they will they will tell you their project talking about this. Thank you very much. Um, Talking about people, please. Talking about emotion and talking about feeling. Um, we need the, uh, that one. No. Vale, lo tienes aquí. That one. That one. And you, how do you play for presentation? We did that before and stop it. It's okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. okay, hi everyone. I'm Isaac. I'm going to talk to you about Smile Spaces, our challenge for the Hafford Something Better Hackathon here at Campo Party. So, Smile Spaces. Uh, I want to talk about our, tr our team, Trovi team, the challenge, how we address it, and the future of this challenge. First, about our team, who are over there on my teammates. First, from left to right, Fran, a social developer, Pedro, IS developer, Jose, our mentor, uh, Jorens, Android developer, and me, server, a backend developer. So, what is Smile Spaces? Uh, or, first, before that. Okay. So, uh, what's Trovi? Why Trovi? Uh, we love geolocalization. Localization. And uh, what Trovi means? Trovi means uh, in Esperanto to find. So what's uh, why choose our name? And that's why we choose this project because it's based on localization. The goal is to create friendly and well-being maps to uh, show uh, the, the happiness of a city, divide a city in its areas, measure some parameters, and show uh, the well-being of an area. How are, we going, how are we going to do this? Well, we have to take information from three different sensors, physical, urban, and social. But uh, why it's important? Because we can measure air pollution, water, I don't know, relation, but uh, that's nothing without the feelings of the citizen. So we are going to f measure the feelings and mix it with the physical data and, s and see how these uh, feelings affect the physical data and how the physical data affects the feelings of the, the people. In our solution, we address uh, four main keys. Obtain all data, analyze the data, get our custom parameters, and very important, make it easy to the user. So the big problem, how to get the data? Well, we love open that, but as you know, it's not very extended. No? Uh, here in London, there are a lot of information, public information, APIs, I don't know. But uh, it's maybe it's not the best op global option. So yesterday, we met uh, Libellium. They develop physical sensors to measure everything that's measurable. And better so with an image. So this is all that we can measure with the sensors. Okay? This is all physical measure. 
from water quality, uh, air pollution, I don't know, everything. But that's a lot, tons of data, chunks of data. That's nothing with an algorithm to parse it, to work with it. So this physical data needs to mix with the, you as I said, public opinion. The feelings of the user that live in, every, in each city, in each area. So we are going to get this information with our own app, mobile app, and with public surveys, APIs, I don't know, everything, and mix it with physical data. So once we, are, we got the data, how we analyze it? Well, we love algorithms. So we get it, we're developing a grid one. Not just a normal algorithm, it's called Felix. Why Felix? Well, it's all about well-being and happiness, right? Felix seems like a, a good name. Also, we love something else, uh, bad algorithms. Uh, we love cats, so Felix the cat algorithm. We can theme as Felix as a cat, right? It's a great algorithm. First, Felix gets all the data, okay? It's uh, still in beta. Gets all the data, that's actually how he gets the data, and then Felix plays with the data. When Felix has played with the data, it gives us the well-being parameters. So we have a lot of parameters, physical measure, uh, feelings, and we have five main categories. Cultural environment, opinion, security, and services. Felix, this is how Felix will look like to the user, to the citizen. A lot of parameters, uh, 50 different parameters, through Felix will get us that, our chart. And uh, from the chart, we get the well-being value. This value uh, it's, uh, has four different categories, from green to red, where the user can see in the map perfectly the best areas of a city. So this is what we do. We have a lot of data, a lot of uh, sensors, feelings, plays with Felix, and get five main categories of information. To show that, well, not entering technical details, we develop an API uh, and a server to uh, manage all this data. It's public in GitHub. And to show, us, so to show it, we developed two applications, both for Android and iPhone. In the map, this is London. This a lot of areas. Uh, you can see green areas, uh, less green areas. The greener are better, so of course. If the user uh, clicks on one, you can see it can see the Felix of that, that of that area. I don't know, for example, and you can see uh, details of that area: museums, sports centers, air pollution, everything that uh, Felix has from this area. Also, uh, we need to get the feelings of the user. So there is a button up there, add feeling, where the user just choose a color of their mood and uh, we offer the possibility to analyze their social network. So it's transparent to the user. The user do not have to do anything. It says, yes, analyze my Twitter, and we analyze all the Twitters and see how it feels about their area, about the city. So sneak peek of the app. When the users zoom out, we, have a, we do a cluster of the areas, uh, calculating the average uh, value of each area. If the users zoom in, uh, we split the cluster, and this is the detailed view with Felix and all parameters. Environment, opinion, security, and services. So that's uh, Felix, that's how it works. And at filling, the user shows their mood, it can add photographs and specify they want they let us use their uh, social networks to analyze their feelings so that's that's felix that's just, that's smile spaces there's a lot more to do gamification notifications setting screens of, of course more cuts always and if you like it you have more gifts in felix the cat going tumblr.com and you can focus and uh, check out code in github so thank you if you have any questions Thank you very much for the presentation. And we are going to have another one, another presentation. There are a new group. It's called uh, SMATS. OK, SMATS. And they are going to tell you and show you.
Vamos bien, ¿eh? O sea que podéis tenéis entre 5 y 10 minutos, ¿vale? Well, first of all, uh, we'd like to thank Andreu and Jose for giving us the opportunity to present in front of you what we've been working on. And to start, I have uh, a bad news to, to tell to you all. It's that there will be advertisement. Uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of content is generated and there are things that have to be for free in order to work because people isn't, aren't going to be paying for this thing. So we have uh, an example. We went to the garden here in the UK, and the first thing we have is a huge advert of Wacky TV. And if we go to uh, a Spanish uh, newspaper also, we have uh, in all the background is an ad. So we thought about this is like where we live in the internet. And here, the ads can be more or less intelligent. They, we, they have cookies. They can track us where we go on the internet and know what we like. Uh, Google has an imp a whole empire built just on top of that. But in the, in the 1.0 world, we have no way to, to have the proper advertisement in the, in the cities. So that's the thing we built. We built smart, smart ads for smart cities. So with SMADS, what we try to do is that we have the, these panels, these ads, and we can customize the ad. Uh, we have various ads, and uh, the ads are placed in the, in the, in the, in the glass based on the, on the current conditions. Uh, an example of this would be if you are a, a sunglasses company, you don't want to advertise your product today because today is raining, today is cloudy, and no one's going to bother buying some sunglasses today. But yesterday, that was quite sunny. Uh, people would have needed some sunglasses, so if you're a uh, sunglasses company, you might have wanted to advertise yesterday, but not have advertised he today. But if you have an ad in, in the street, you can't uh, take it and put it w uh, depending on the conditions. So that's what we've built. We added a, like a category to the smart cities that he presented, and we add advertisement. So we, we, what we do now is we have these, these small panels and provide a, a sensor that measures movement, uh, temp temperature, luminosity, and uh, yeah. So what, what we can do with that is that, for example, if uh, they, we have a bunch of advertisers with all the, their ads, and then ca they can define under what conditions they want their ad to be shown. So for example, if I'm the, the, uh, the sunglasses company, I can say that I only want my ad to be shown if the day is, if there's a lot of luminosity in the sky and the temperature is uh, above 30 degrees centigrade, and we can do that. And if one day is this is the temperature, the ad will be shown. But today, that is rainy, it won't be shown. And that's that's what we do. And my friend Alberto is going to to continue from here. So what we're trying to do is imagine a city where uh, so all the people go around the city. They have screens around the city, and they'll have the ads that they need at, in that precise moment. How else can we improve this? With, uh, with open data, for example. We can, we can process open data statistics about society and improve the ads depending on that. And all this in real time together with the sensors we're using. Another example is with our smartphones. Imagine if a part of the, uh, the condition, the weather conditions, and apart from uh, statistics we know from people, uh, we're carrying our smartphones and we go near a screen, that screen can get our information to show, to show even more personal ads for us. So uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, very intelligent ads in smart cities. 
But also, we have a problem. What if we have screens everywhere? I don't know if some people here have watched Black Mirror, uh, an English uh, sh uh, TV show. Um, there are some chapters and episodes of uh, uh, imagining a future where we have screens everywhere full of advertisement. We don't want that. We don't want to see advertisement all the time. We want to see advertisement when we really need to see it, when we want to see it. So with Mads, we also want to add uh, an ethical part to it. We don't want screens everywhere. We don't want ads that aren't transparent. We don't want advertisers to tell us something, but then they're actually telling us something else that they're not, not saying directly. So that's mad. Smart ads in smart cities in an ethical way. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we we built this in the in the hackathon in two days and a half. So it's been a lot of coding and no sleep and not a lot of sleeping. So this is us. Uh, feel free to f to fork us in GitHub. We are uh, smart smart ads. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jorge, Alberto, Alex, and Braulio. Uh, well, the last, the last challenge we have been working with is uh, Eutemia. And the group of Eutemia is going to present here, OK? Hi, good morning. We are Stick Studios. Um, our partners are Josue Rodriguez and Juan Montenegro. I'm Gabs. He's Carlos. We are introducing a new app uh, based in social inclusion. Um, our, app, our app is uh, based in, in trying to give new solutions, smart solutions, and fast solutions to people who are in a strange environment needing something special. For example, if you are mm, gluten intolerant and you are in a new city and you don't know the city or don't know the people, just look for, the, for our app, look the people around you that has the same, the same trouble or the same interest if you are another person and for example, send uh, those people a broadcast to ask them where you can eat without gluten or when you can have um, places without barriers if you are a person in, in, in reduced mobility. And it's um, an app trying to, to fulfill needs that we are seeing all around the world. And no, not the most of the time we ha we can find solutions, and not the most of the time we can find people who help us because not the most of the time we know people in in every part of the world. The main idea is trying to to make you know people around the world that have your your the same problems as you, or the same interests as you. Is is um, an ad. Um, that can everybody use and and provides you help all around the world. And now my partner, we will tell you how it how how it works. Thank you. Hi, uh, the technology behind uh, this application uh, is based in future internet uh, resource. The future internet resource is a group that uh, gives us uh, a lot of resources. For example, uh, we can use the cloud system for uh, deployment the servers with all uh, as uh, as needs, and also uh, we can use a system of mashup widgets for reuse and don't need uh, programming the, uh, again a system that exists. Uh, for example, uh, the widget uh, used by, uh, uh, for the map uh, exists. Uh, I can use uh, with only one click. Also, uh, if uh, ads produce a new widget, for example, the tax system for uh, localize uh, the people, uh, we can put in the server of, of Fiverr and reuse. Uh, 
uh, this is the the main technology that uh, this app uh, use. Thank you. So as you can see, um, it's a easy explain app, easy to use app, and easy to create a community of people that has your same that have your same the same interests as you. Um, Euthymia is the concept of balance, emotional balance. So this is why what we try to reach to reach with this app. So thank you very much and watch out. Watch us at 12 o'clock in the workshops uh, soon to explain more. Thank you and good morning. Okay, uh, thank you very much to the three groups. And um, well, as you see, we have been talking about technology, foster to get a, a great city for great persons. Uh, right now, we would like to have, uh, you have some questions, we'd like to answer you in between Jordi. Uh, as you can see, Jordi, he knows a lot about technology, about sensors, and I know a bit about architectural and about uh, persons. So you can ask each one if you, you want it. Yeah. Uh, good morning again. and. Uh, I think uh, the Smile Places project is very interesting. But <clears throat> what do users get back from giving feedback about the city? Like, would they feel comfortable to tell everybody if they like this place, if they, how they feel? I think feelings are something very private. And I don't think everybody's willing to give them out. And if everybody's not giving them out, then we are not having real results of what's, go what's going on in Smile Places. So my question is, uh, what kind of reward does people get from taking part of this app or using this app? Okay. You have uh, to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one thing. Uh, okay, one thing. Um, did you... Do, uh, okay. Uh, do, you, do you talk about your feelings with other persons? Do you... Do, do you would you like to share your emotion? No, no brand says emotion, mm -hmm. a personal emotion, okay? No name, okay? I, I think we share our emotions just by walking somewhere, how you feel, what your face is saying, and not by tapping some stuff on an app. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't even know how you feel. Sometimes you go to a place and you like the atmosphere, but the next day you go there and because you had a bad day, you don't feel the same way. So the kind of uh, trying to Explain how you feel in a place. For me, I'm sorry, but it makes not much sense because every day you feel different. Mm -hmm. So every day I go to a pub and I feel happy. Next day I, w I will not feel happy. So how can I measure this if every day I feel in a different way? People just don't have the same emotions on the same place. For example, this time in London, I feel way better than I felt last year. So last year I would say London wasn't cool and this year I would say it's cool. So you can't... Emotions are something very changing, and pers persons are something that they don't feel always the same. And I think a couple of days ago we had the same discussion, and yeah. I tried to make it public so everybody can give feedback about this. <laughs> Great. Uh, I will tell you one thing. Okay. Uh, till five years ago, I was living in, Ma in Madrid. It's a in a great area. It's, um, it's uh, small houses with a lot of parks, a lot of green. And I like it to live there, you know. But the thing was that wasn't no shop. It was no shops there. It was no bar for for a beer or for a coffee. No retail uh, spaces. No school. And I need to use the car every day. So it was a, a good place, but I didn't feel good. Yeah, this you are using just the right word. Yeah. I felt that way. Yeah. Did, the, did the rest of the people feel that way too? Okay, if you have a lot of different opinions, oh, okay, it's like the, har like the arms, like the arms, okay? They, they, they move by the pheromones okay. and they follow the others, okay? And some, some of the ar arms go to some places and go nowhere. But when one <laughs> finds a nice place for food, for it, mm -hmm. they all the other start to go, start to go, and all feel. 
Yeah, but, then, measure. but then ants are not humans. Uh, yeah. Humans have emotions that change but from it's, second it's, it's to so second. Close. We are so close. They are more, they are also, than I. Uh, once again, I think ants are not humans. Uh, I think different than an ant. I don't follow him because he likes the same food as I like. Mm -hmm. I will not go the same place he goes because he found great food. Because probably his great food is not my great food. No. So this is my point. Uh, trying to measure emotions, trying to create a chart of emotion, that's cool. But believe me, this chart will change every day and it probably will not help. Well, probably it might help. I don't want to I don't want to state it might not help. But emotions are a changing thing, so every day you will see different results. So you actually will not get exact conclusions. I like the idea of having an emotion map, but I think it's interesting to analyze how emotion changes instead of just having a static emotion map. Oh. This is I think it's a a changing point for your project is trying to create a map of how emotions change in the city. Uh -huh. And also, a great thing would be to have charts of how young people feel in a place, because young people will feel different from older people, uh, gay people will feel different from heterosexual people. Uh, everybody will feel different. People that come from England to Gran Canaria probably will have a different opinion from the beach than I have, because I have the beach every, every year all time of the year, and they have it just for one week. They will think, oh, great, I'm on the beach for one week. They love it, but I don't love it anymore. So yes, but I'm sure that, for example, you, can, you will find places for different kinds of people, OK? Maybe there is, there is people that like to, to live on the country. Yeah, you're, okay, you're getting closer oh, to my opinion now. OK, Thanks yeah, yeah, we're talking about the same. <laughs> thank you very much. In yeah, in thank the, you. <laughs> there, there. <coughs> so it was actually something very similar to what we were just talking about. Um, so perhaps taking it another direction, I saw you have the social network integration. Um, that was associated with measuring people's opinions. Could you explain a bit more about how that works? How do you measure someone's mood from their GitHub account? <laughs> okay. okay, so... The social network analysis, uh, analysis is not a thing that we have implemented. It already exists. Okay? So there are a lot of services to analyze social networks. We just have to use it, uh, use their APIs to get uh, the information that we want. Uh, we didn't implement this. We have only three days. <laughs> is, it, is it like sentiment analysis of what you've been showing? Yeah. Yeah, 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 That's sure. It, yeah. What you post on Twitter about the theater or the uh, localized tweets, uh, that things. If you talk about a lot uh, in a place, it's because uh, maybe you are having a great time there. You, know. you post a lot of photos. Have you done any analysis on how well that maps to what people express in their pictures? I wouldn't have time for that yet. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think at the end of the discussion comes that he's trying to mix like objective data yeah. with subjective data. And of yeah. course, people say, OK, how do you merge that? But anyway, let's see. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, of course. Uh, we, we, can, we can measure. Well, if we have a lot of objective uh, data, OK, and we have uh, feelings that don't change in a time, uh, think of it, okay? You get feelings that don't change in the time. Uh, think uh, as, as a long time algorithm, okay? More or less. You have a lot of uh, physical data and uh, feelings that don't change uh, for a time. And then a uh, physical change occurs. Like, I don't know, uh, you have a museum and you don't have uh, none anymore. You have a hospital and you don't have it anymore. And then you can see how when the, hospi the hospital was there, the feelings were. I don't know, 80%. Uh, and when the hospital went uh, gone, you, the feelings drop. We got to go up. OK, just one <laughs> thing. If a hospital disappears, you'll probably notice before in the TV or in the newsstand on an app. That, that's just my idea. Sorry, we've got, a, we've got to end the discussion now. If it, would it be possible to, like, OK. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, you, you will know because you live there, probably. But uh, if a person uh, is going, it's searching for a place to live, 
it, it, will, it will see how the uh, feelings drop down. <laughs> well, yes, uh, okay, yes. let's just put it here. Something you think about and you discuss. If you mix objective data and subjective data, what is the result? Is it objective or subjective? But this is something you think about it and then you discuss later, <laughs> <then>, okay? No more questions? Sorry, okay. there's, we've run out of time for any more questions, but I'm sure you can discuss. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank All you very right. much, everybody. Thanks.